Good afternoon. I'm Lloyd Robertson in Lake Placid with Bernie Pascal as we come forward for the big game. Uh, Bernie, I suppose Canadians are forever hopeful. Well, we're still looking forward to an exciting game today, Lloyd, and I think goaltending could be the Cree, as you, uh, you mentioned at the outset. Paul Pajot uh, obviously has had some super games for Team Canada. He's the key as far as Canada's performance today, and uh, I don't think they'll be blown out of the building at all. They'll skate with the Soviets. It should be an entertaining game. We're going now to Olympic Arena for Ron Roosh and Tom Watt and the commentary on Canada and the Soviet Union. Thanks very much, Lloyd. And let's take a look at your screen right now. There are a, a number of champions right there. On the right of your screen, Doug Risebrow. That's Doug Jarvis, Brian Anglum, and a fellow who played some pretty good goal for the Montreal Canadiens as well, Ken Dryden. And they are here to cheer Canada on. A tremendous amount of excitement there always is when Canada plays the Soviet Union. It's been a long period of frustration. The last time Canada defeated the Soviets in an Olympic game was back in 1960 at Squaw Valley when they won 3-2. to two. But since then, they have been beaten uh, in uh, the Olympics of 64, 68, and then, of course, now we're back again after that 12-year absence. What's going to happen? Well, we should see. Tom? Well, uh, the secret to Canada's game is to, to do a good job checking. The Soviets have uh, the advantage of, of being a fast-breaking team, very aggressive team around your own net. Canada's game plan is to try to forecheck well, stop them from moving out of their own zone, put a lot of pressure on them, delay them as much as we can, try to force a mistake inside their own zone. There's the coach of the Soviets, Viktor Tikhanov, in goal for Canada will be Paul Pajot, the youngster from Shawinigan, Quebec, actually born in Gatineau, Quebec, but plays in Shawinigan with the cataracts there in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And, of course, the very familiar number 20 for the Soviets, Vladislav Tretyak, who uh, is looking for his third Olympic gold medal here and has always been a thorn in the side of Canadian hockey teams. Fedosov out there to face off against Devani. Canada controls it from the face off, and they clear it down, and this game is underway. Deep inside the zone now for Canada. Around the boards, Devani. Devani behind the net, but he has checked on the play. Petrov on the far side is cleared out to center ice and down into Team Canada territory. Flipped off the boards on the far side. That's Randy Gregg, number four for Canada. He gets it out in front. Remo starts out. Goes off his stick, but now it's Devani at center ice. Devani's over the line. Devani Devani has checked just as he hit the line by Fedosov. Now at center ice, it's cleared all the way down into the Soviet end. Down there to touch it for the Soviets. Kazanov, he touches it. It's called. Icing will be the infraction and back into the Team Canada zone for the faceoff. Both teams making changes after only 33 seconds. And against the Soviets, when the pace is so quick in the hockey game, you can't have the team out there too long. You've got to make the quick changes. First change being made by both clubs after only 33 seconds. From the faceoff, it's cleared out to center ice past Star. Off. He goes back, just backpedaling, and then threw the puck away. Maxwell's down to the line, but he was checked again. Now to Barry on this side, but offside, as the player was trapped inside the blue line, so a faceoff just outside the Soviet line. There's Ken Barry. He's had a pretty good Olympics, really. He has uh, four goals and one assist in the four games he played. Of course, had that hat trick against the Dutch team. Barry, a youngster. Play with the U.S. Mr. Bruin, plays at Denver University now. Here's Barry over the line with it now. Barry into the corner. He falls in against the boards. After it is Maxwell, both behind the net. Fedosov has it for the Soviets. Fedosov, that long lead pass, and he put it right on the stick of McLean. Tries to get it in front of the net, and it knocks high into the air. And then Flutkov gets it. Rolls it in front of his own net. There's Fedosov with a lot of pressure on him. Maxwell around the net, gets it out to center ice. McLean waits for Bates to get onside, then clears it over the line, but it's called right back out to center ice by Vasiliev. And down into his own end goes Spring. He'll touch it this call on the icing. We had a good example of Canada's type of forechecking. Canada today is going to forecheck two men deep, one man in the middle, and then there are two defensemen playing regularly on the point. And there was a good example there where the Soviet defenseman just turned and tried to throw that puck up through the middle. And Paul McLean was standing there just ready to trap him, got the opportunity just inside the Soviet blue line. But that one man has to take away the long pass. A face off inside the zone, and Golikov gets it into the corner. Ilya Letvinov gets slammed in against the board, but it's cleared out to center ice. Now it is Alexander Golikov. He hits the line, but it's taken away there by Canada once again as Davidson makes the check and it's flipped in over the blue line. Now moving it after it is nil. He gets it in the corner. Glenn Anderson. Anderson trying to get it front. There's that scores! Jim Nil has scored and Canada has taken the lead one to nothing. Great play in front of the net and a great shot. And listen to this arena as Chester whooped it. 
Canada has the lead, 135 in. The play was really made coming out of the side, coming off the side by Glennie Anderson. Glennie controls the puck, throws it, the rebound comes off. Ronnie Davidson, Jim Mill just moving off the side, beats, uh, beats Vladimir Trechak. Another look at it, Jim Mill controlling that puck inside. Davidson moving the puck back and through. Here's Jim Mill moving in. Jimmy Nill always uses the wrist shot, never slaps the puck. Great shot. Canada goes ahead one to nothing. Well, what a great start for Canada. Here's Peary, rink wide pass. He goes deep into the zone. Backboard for the Soviets is Pitisov. He clears it around the boards. Maltsev digging it out, clears it out to center ice. At center ice, Dalvis loves it, knocks it down. And the puck is cleared inside the blue line. We'll get the official scoring on that in a couple of moments as Canada's in for checking. Fury's in there. Dalvis is in there as well. It goes around the boards. Fittisoff has it. Fittisoff clearing it out to center ice. Now it's center ice. It's picked off by Canada. Anderson loses it. It's right in front of them. They shoot. And it's over top of the net. It's Pajol up here to get a piece of that one. Now it's high in the air. They jam it in there. Puck is cleared in against the boards. Fury, Fury flipping it out into the crowd. And it's called for a face-off. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Anyways, it's in the Soviet zone. Now cleared out to center ice. Down over the line comes Petrov. But he is checked. Is coming back to make the play there. Was Don Spring. It's in the corner. Cleared behind the net. Spring's got it. Around to this side now. Hindmarch going in against the boards. That's Devaney in the corner. Trying to pin it in there. And it uh, will be called for a face-off in the Canadian zone. The official scoring on that goal. Jim Neal from Davidson and Anderson of 135. There's the great Valerie Harlamov. Many people say he is in his final Olympics and perhaps his final appearance with the Soviet national team. I would I would suspect that whole line of Petrov, Harmalov, and Mikhailov, this may be their last hurrah. Face off to the right of the Canadian goal, taking the draw for Canada. Kevin Maxwell comes back to the blue line. There's the shot. It's just wide of the net and on the far boards now. After it is McLean, but he can't get it. It's taken by the defense. Joe Grant clearing it right wide up to center ice. Ken Berry racing after it, but meeting him to the puck is Billy Lentinoff. Now it's cleared over the line. Maxwell can't reach it. Billy Lentinoff goes back. He's behind the net. Clears it all the way around the boards and down into Team Canada territory. Terry from O'Malley's backboard. It'll be caught on the icing here and brought back into the Soviet zone. There's Joe Grant from Niagara Falls, Ontario. Kitchener Rangers this is where he played his junior hockey in the University of Toronto the last couple of years under our cohort here. Co-coach for the, Can uh, the Canadian team, Tom Watt. Well, Paul Peugeot had to make a great stop uh, when there was a mistake made by the Canadian defense all by themselves in front of the net. He just got that leg and stick over in time. Base off to the left of the Soviet goal. Maxwell's chased out of there. Also chased out is Vladimir Golikov, one of two brothers, and his brother, Alexander, moves in. He'll take the draw against McLean from the faceoff now. McLean kicking it into the corner, races after it. He and Fedizov, and it's slipped behind the net. They dig it out in front now. It just slips into the netting at the side, and it's up in the netting, and finally it is whistled dead. We should mention here that the officials for this game, Jim Nagels of the United States, Marty Demers, and Jim Doyle, also of the United States. And if you we're looking for any kind of a break at all, Tom. I think to have uh, three American officials in the game, at least you're used to what uh, the type of hockey, the, the type of game they call. Kenny Berry just uh, moving, trying to get Kazatnov away from him. He's wrapping them all up there, and that's one thing you can't do. Oops. So it's, whoops, a little uh, spear <laughs> there at the end, but you can't let them tie up inside and wrestle. You don't want to confront their strength. You want to back off a little bit, get into the opening, and try to get the shot. Don't stand in too deep and wrestle with them. There's Kenny Berry. All right, the faceoff will be to the left of the Soviet goal. For Canada, Ron Davidson taking the draw, and it goes past everybody out to center ice. Warren Anderson chasing it down on the boards on this side, fires it off the boards. Kazanov takes it inside his own zone, clears it out over center ice, and it's knocked down out there by Randy Gregg. Hopped over his stick, getting it is on this side is Warren Anderson. He clears it along the boards at center ice now. Down go a couple of players. Makarov trying to control it. A big pile up against the boards in the middle of that is Nil as well. That comes back to Anderson. Glenn Anderson hoists it out to the blue line. Only tossed that one away. Now against the far board. Taking it for Canada is Ron Davidson. He gets it to Anderson. Anderson at center right coming to the line now along with Nil. Nil has the goal. Tries to split the defense. The covering up very uh, alertly there was Finisoff. And he's got it on the far board. But Nil moves in. It comes away. And taking it away for the Soviets now against the boards on this side. It's Makarov. Makarov check. Davidson's in there. It's right in front of that. The shot is right off. The rebound. They shot it wide with an open net. 
to shoot at. Peary's in the forecheck. He's got the puck right to roll it in front. Boy, Canada's been doing a great job forechecking. Puck is clear to the far side now. Cleared down to the line, knocked down. And the Soviets come to the line. It was knocked down with a high stick. And it'll be called for a face-off in the center ice area. Wow, what a chance for Canada. Brad Carey all by himself just blasted the puck wide, but the puck came loose. Makarov being loose with the puck inside his own zone. Brad Carey breaking all the way in, just a shot, just missing the edge of the net. And Glenn Anderson coming back with the rebound, just lifts the puck wide. Oh, what an opportunity with that open net, just lifts the puck wide. Play underway from the face off. It's down to the Soviet end again. Down there is Vasiliev. He goes into the corner after it, takes a shot from Carey. It's cleared around the boards. As the blue line water is moving in into the corner to Pansic, he kicks it along the boards, controls it, and then uh, is checked again. And the Soviets come away with it. As clearing it up to center ice is Lebedev, but his long lead pass is intercepted by Spring. Now checked on the far side there is uh, for Canada is Dalvis. And the Soviets come back in, but the check is wrong. Here's a shot, and it just misses on the far side. That shot taken from just inside the blue line by Krudov. Now the Soviets control it inside Team Canada territory. Maltsev along the boards. It comes up to the blue line. Still kept in. Fired into the corner. After it there is Lebedev. Lebedev takes a check by Dalvis. It's rolled out in front. There's nobody there. Maltsev dropping it off to the blue line. There's the shot. It trips wide. Taken by Stelikov from the blue line. Now Spring shooting it down the ice to take the pressure off. It misses the Soviet net. So we'll have icing here. As back to get it is Stelikov. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. <laughs> From the face off, the puck is in the corner. Canada trying to come away, and here they come. Up the center ice comes Canada with Joe Grant leading the rush. He hits the line. Grant working for the corner now, getting a man in front, but he's ridden in against the boards by Billy Lettinoff, and out at center ice, it's the Soviets. In over the line now, Harlamov, he's behind it, rolls it out in front, the loose puck, and Basho goes down, and he holds on. one nothing. Canada is leading. official Jim Nagel's interference call on David Hindmarsh uh, coming back, back checking on uh, Mikhailov. He put a little bit of a clutch on him and Mikhailov uh, took a little bit of a dive after. I don't think he really had to take the dive, but he was grabbed, trying to get in the play as a third man and the back checker not going to let him the Soviets get that odd man advantage. The shot coming just off the edge of the net after the uh, infraction being called. Paul Peugeot forced to make an excellent save, and that's what Canada has to have. The good ball is going to be successful today. High march off for interference at 6.08. Canada leading one to nothing. The Soviets on the power play. In the corner it goes. Controlling it is Golikov. They have the two brothers out there behind the net. That's the other Golikov, Vladimir. Out in front, it's hoisted out to the blue line. Kept in by Fedosov at the blue line. He's working the point positions along with Kazatinov. Fedosov with the puck over to Kazatinov. In deep now, taking it as Makarov. Makarov circling into the corner. The two Golikovs are out in front of the net. It's back out to Kazatinov. Here's the shot in front, and it's deflected away by Randy Craig. Now, over on the far side, Alexander Golikov out in front for Victor Golikov. Puck goes down, it's loose in front, and Canada clears it away as Randy Craig got his stick on it and shot it down the ice. 117 remaining in the penalty. Behind his own net, Fedosov. He leaves it for Golikov. Vladimir Golikov on his way out of the zone. The pass is to his brother Alexander. Over the line. Stops up in against the board. Clears it out to the blue line. Kazanov, number seven, has it. Flips it into the corner. Canada gets it. Gives it along the boards. Anderson. Glenn Anderson in against the boards. Trying to control it, but unable to. It's back to the blue line. Makarov is there. He flips it over for Kazanov. Kazanov checked, and Anderson takes it. Anderson can't control it inside the blue line. Here's a chance. And a good save there by Fajo. Puck is rolled down the ice as getting it inside the zone was Primo, and he shot it down right on the Soviet goal. Puck is cleared Rick wide. We've got 35 seconds left in the power play. Over the line come the Soviets. Carry the puck is Makarov. He's chased in against the boards. The puck is cleared up to the blue line. Vitisov. Vitisov rolling it over for Sklutka. Over to the far side. That's Makarov. Back out to Vitisov. Vitisov winding up. There's the shot. Rebound. And it's picked up by Canada. Fired off the glass and down the ice. 14 seconds left in the power play. And the Soviets and Canada both change on the fly. Now it's Vitisov. Feeds it off. Coming out of his end. Schwartzov. Schwartzov out over center right. Barry takes it, but he's unable to control it. It's in against the boards. Out to the blue line now. The penalty has ended. Buck has rolled in front. Canada's trying to get it out. Kept in by Finisov. He shoots it in near the 
area in front of the net and getting down on his knees and covering it up is Waters, and he'll hold it for the faceoff. Paul Darris in the middle of your picture there, along with Spring. And the faceoff will be to the right of the Canadian goal. David Heinmarsh coming right off that bench, and when uh, Tim Waters was trying to cover up, just made sure that the Soviet player, Paul Darris, wasn't able to shove that puck underneath him and get the opportunity just going right through. Peugeot all by himself here now. The first stop, great stop, the rebound. He got help to arrive to ice that puck after that great stop off the edge of the crease. Well, it killed off the penalty. Canada leading one to nothing on a goal by Jim Neal. It's cleared off the boards. Barry can't control it. Against the boards, they get it out to center ice. Turning with it is Balderas, one of the quickest men in world hockey. He tried to get around O'Malley, and O'Malley did a good job of playing the man on that one. They knocked Balderas down. Now Canada coming out. It's cleared right wide by McLean. Racing it after it is Barry, and it's called on the icing. In fact, to touch it before Barry can reach it is Masilia, and he'll come back down for a faceoff to the Canadian end. Well, there's an example of a little excitement uh, by the Canadian team. Just throwing that pass a little too soon, making the long, difficult pass when the easy one could be made. Just take your time. Don't force those passes. Make the easy play. Don't try to make the difficult one. We saw a close-up on the bench of Kevin Primo, graduate of the University of Alberta. He's an Edmonton boy. Faceoff will be to the right of Pajo. And Kevin Maxwell will take the draw. You hear the shy boo, which is, of course, that Soviet word for puck. The chat here in the rink. Buck is kept just at the line. Here's a quick shot off the stick glove of Pajo. And against the boards. After it there for Canada's McLean. He can't get his out in front of the net. Now they try to get a shot away. And it's cleared away by the defense. Keeping it in at the blue line is Perhukin. And now oh, just chopping away at it. A lot of checking going on. Here's a chance for Maltsev. That went off and stick it up into the crowd. No, it didn't. It hit the glass behind the net. Now it's in the corner. Maltsev taking a rough ride in there from Kevin Maxwell. Now out of front. And Maltsev with a great chance. And it's cleared away and out to center ice. Here comes Barry. And Barry had a roll off his stick. Great chance there for Maltsev. But Pajot was equal to that one. Now over the line. Comes Maltsev once again. Maltsev trying to get set. Takes a shot. And it rolls to the side of the net. Grant. Grant goes down. Puck is cleared to the blue line. It's poked into the corner after it is Lebedev. Grant goes in against the boards as well. Also Maxwell. And everybody over skates it up the blue line. Billy left it off, winding up the shot. And it went off the leg there as O'Malley went sprawling to block it. Now Canada clearing it off the glass and down the ice into Soviet territory. And Billy left it off will go back to touch it. And it's called on the icing for a faceoff back uh, in the zone of Team Canada. Don't forget, tonight, we'll have Olympic highlights for you following the late news. And I think we've got... I missed something, Tom. Well, you missed just a tremendous, a tremendous check with both players. There was young Krutov taking a run at Joe Grant. Joe got his stick and arm up at the last minute. There was an awful collision behind the net. We'll have highlights following the late news tonight. Olympic highlights of speed skating, cross-country skiing, and the women's giant slalom from this morning. And, of course, hockey. That's following the national news tonight. Now it's taken from the face off by Spring. Spring. Anderson out to center ice. That lead pass went right by Stan Delvis. And is cleared back into Team Canada territory. Here's the chance for the Soviets as they work in. Harlamov. Harlamov trying to get in front of the net. But coming back and making the check is Fury. Now in against the boards. It's flipped along the boards. Delvis has bounced it out in front of the net. And after it on the far side, now is Fury. Fury at center ice. He gets it up against his chest. The Soviets get control of it again. Harlamov over the line. Harlamov trying to make a move on the net. And the puck just rolls to the side of the net. He's in there as well as Mihailov. Mihailov back to the blue line. Fedisov. He shoots it in there. It's loose in front of the net. But it's poked away by goaltender Paul Pajo. Mihailov in the corner. Check thrown on Petrov. The centerman on this veteran line. Now Mihailov. Number 13. Back out to the blue line. Fedisov. Here's the shot. It drifts wide of the net. And bounces up into the crowd. And it's called for a faceoff. Penalty going to be called by Jim Nichols again. Canada going to be short to Randy Gregg. Randy Gregg coming over to the box along with referee Nagels. Uh, a hook is going to be the call. We see the action in front of the net. Warren Anderson is trying to stop the, the original shot. Paul Peugeot being in. And uh, Randy Gregg saying, well, what am I doing? Look, there's the arm going up. 10.47 the time of the penalty. Greg off for hooking. Shots on goal at this point. 8-3 to three favor the Soviets. And that's a good chance that Pajo has made some great stops early in this game. Face off of the outside. Canada's blue line. They're playing shorthanded for the second time, but they lead 1-0 on 
Jim Nill's goal at 135 of the first period on the faceoff inside the blue line now picked up and cleared down the ice by Spring back to get it for the Soviets Hervukin Hervukin working along with Makarov and Makarov gets that pass from Golikov and it's poked away and back into the zone again Billy Litvinov over to the far side for Hervukin around the net comes Golikov he drops it off Billy Litvinov behind the net Ilya Letvinov ahead. Golikov. This is Victor Golikov. It's center ice. To his brother, Alexander, over the line. Cuts to the corner. Trying to find his point man. Winds up in the corner with it. Alexander and Golikov clearing it to the far fourth for Fairbukin. In against the boards. Alexander Golikov. He tried to clear it in front. Here's a catch for Canada. It went off, or at least for the Soviets, but it went off a leg and into the corner. Now against the boards on this side. And a good hard collision in against the boards. Involving Glenn Anderson and Ilya Letvinov. Now the Soviets again try to come out. It's fed back for Perbukin. We've got 59 seconds remaining in the penalty. Over to the far boards now. Over skating the puck is Golikov. Canada gets possession of it. Out at center ice for Canada. That's Waters. Waters waiting for Mates to get on the ice. Now clears it along the boards. Primo. Primo in board checking, but controlling the puck for the Soviets. Billy Lentinov. He gets it over to this side for, for Perbukin. Perbukin can't get out of the zone. It's dropped off for Makarov with 34 seconds left in the penalty. Makarov is over the line. Makarov cutting for the far boards. Now Lebedev looking for that pass around the boards, and he gets it on this side. Out in front of the net. It's taken a into the corner again. The Soviet just skating around with it now. That's Prudolf. Prudolf onto the blue line. Vasiliev winding up. There's a shot and it drifts wide of the net with Prudolf right in front. Out of the far side. Kept in by Starikov. Into the corner it goes with 10 seconds left of the power play. Taking it now is Prudolf. Prudolf trying to get it out in front. Gives it to Lebedev. Out to the blue line. Just keeping it in there with Starikov. And the penalty has expired. Great by getting back into the play now. Here's the shot. It's blocked in the defense. Comes over to this side, shot into the corner, and Canada successfully killed off the penalty. Now into the corner on the far side. For Canada, that's Primo jamming in there. Here comes Canada with Randy Gregg. The lead pass, breaking down on the left side. Heinmark, he's over the line, and the puck is cleared up by the Soviet defense. Back in over the line for the Soviets, that's Lebedev. He tried to get a shot away, and then it dropped it. There was nobody there. Intercepted by Heinmark at center ice of O'Malley. He winds up from center ice. It's blocked by Trenchak and cleared behind the net. For the Soviets, Vasilya. Vasilya clearing it out to center ice. It just dropped off there. Down over the line comes Rudolf. He gets the shot away. The rebound is cleared out to center ice. And knocking it down out there is Starikov. He feeds it back to Vasilya. Vasilya out over center ice now. Carrying the puck is Schwarzoff over the line. Schwarzoff for the man in front. That rolls it in front. They score. The puck is passed, passed by Schwarzoff in front of the net. And the Soviets have even this hockey game up. Schwarzoff breaking one. Aldaris or one of uh, Canada's men going in trying to cover him. We see sports off going wide on the one-on-one -on -one situation. He just throws it over and there we see two defenders that may have gone off the back checker coming back. Whether or not Aldaris touched it or not, I'm not sure. There's the lot pass just coming across. Two Canadian players checking off Balderas, but the puck going in behind Peugeot. We'll have to wait for the official announcement. Sportsoff will obviously get a point on it. It's a 1-1 tie here as the puck is cleared into the corner. After it, it's cleared down the ice. There'll be icing on this one if it has enough juice. It does. It goes down. Finisoff will be touching it, but the icing is waved off. They felt he could get to it before it crossed the red line. So now it's Kazatinov. It's center ice over the line. Now down into the corner. Sportsoff in the corner after it. They jam in there, comes to the area in front of the net, rolls right into Pajo, and he holds it. We'll have a face-off in the Canadian zone. Helmut Balderas scoring the goal, another look at it. Sportsov just lobbing that puck across in front of the net. And we still don't see who touches it, whether it went off the uh, Canadian defender coming back at Balderas or whether Balderas was able to get a stick on it, we're not sure. But getting credit for the goal, Helmut Balderas. And the assists on it, Sportsoff and Schlutov. Schlutov setting it up, of course. Face off to the left of the 
Canada goal. There's a shot, a screenshot through, just picked away by Tyson over the far boards. Now Anderson, Glenn Anderson, gets it out to center ice. Anderson chasing after it as he comes to the line, but coming back to make the check on him. That was Petrov. Petrov at center ice, hitting the line. Petrov over from a high off. He gets to the side of the net, but he has a short side, a bad angle to shoot at, and it winds up against the boards for Harlemov. Shot from the blue line by Fairwukin. It's blocked. Here's Fairwukin again. The shot comes right in. Here's a chance for Petrov. Rolls in front of the net, and down goes Spring, and it's underneath him, and he holds it for the Face off. Well, Team Canada doing a good job defending, but this is the problem with taking the penalties. Canada has taken two penalties early, and what you do is you get yourself in a mindset. You have to defend. Here's Johnny Spring just sprawling in front of that shot, bringing it under him to kill it. But your mindset then is in defense. Defense, you're defending all the time. Now Team Canada's even, and it's tough enough trying to get back on the attack again and trying to put some pressure on the Soviets. There you see Boris Mihailov, another veteran who has been well his first Olympics 1972 he's looking for his third gold medal as a hockey player now from the face off Terry O'Malley clearing it out to center right shots on goal by the way 14 to 3 favor the Soviets the Pajo has been busy it's a 1-1 tie at center ice it's fed back into the Soviet end there it's taken by Vasiliev. He gets it out to Makarov. Makarov over for Starikov, the defenseman. He gets it to the line now. Trying to fight his way through, and he is bumped off the puck by O'Malley, who came across. And against the boards on this side now, it's Canada trying to come out. It's center ice. Over skating the puck is Heinmark. In against the boards. It comes down into the Soviet end. Back is Vasiliev along with Devaney. Cleared around the boards. In for checking is Heinmark. It's cleared out to center ice. Here come the Soviets now with Makarov over the line. Makarov. And he is bumped off the puck. Coming back to uh, get the puck is Devaney, and he clears it out to center ice. There it's taken by Starikov. Starikov shooting it in. O'Malley, deep in his own end. He's standing there. O'Malley firing it off the boards. And Canada's coming away with it now. Here comes Canada with Maxwell. Maxwell over to the far side. Taken by Grant. Grant. Now to McLean. McLean at center ice, working to the line. He's checked by Vasiliev. He fights for it, but now it's coming in to take the loose puck. And feed it back with Maxwell, but the Soviets again come away as Maltsev's got it. Maltsev over the line. Maltsev cutting into the slot. Maltsev getting set. And he fanned on the shot as he was harassed all the way down by Ken Berry. And he took a hard hit in the corner. Canada's out to center ice with it. Down over the line. They come. Maxwell winding up. The shot went off the leg. Behind everybody. And there's a shot that's just wider than that taken by McLean. Against the board. It's hoisted up into the crowd. And it's called for a face-off. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. <laughs> Face off, the puck is out at center ice now, down over the line for the Soviets, that's Starikov, into the corner it goes, Paul Dare is fighting for it in there, and they try and pin it in, Canada will, but it's poked away from Supancic, and against the boards, slooped off, round behind the net, on this side, Sportsoff is in for checking as well, Canada trying to halt play if they can, and they do, Waters pinning it in, and it's called for a face off. During our first intermission, part of our package will include highlights of the Czechoslovakia-Sweden game, which was played just before this one here at the main field house, and an exciting hockey game that one was. Bernie Pascoe will have those highlights for you, and a very interesting result of that game, too. Here's a shot as the puck is wide of the net. So watch for that during our first intermission. Now Vilya Lesnov out in front of the net. The chance for the Soviets. Lukov trying to get the shot away, but Canada comes away with it now at center ice. Out at center ice. It's Spring having trouble controlling it. The Soviets come right back. Down over the line comes Sportsov. Sportsov dropping it back to Balderas. Balderas over for Slutov. And the shot is blocked into the bet. Canada trying to control it, get it away. Now they have it. Out comes Canada. Tim Waters at center ice. Zupancic. Zupancic with Peary as he goes over the line. Peary's got a chance in front of the net, but he's taken from behind. And Canada going for a change on the play. Blew a good scoring opportunity. Now Balderas over the line. His shot is wide of the net. In the deep is Mihailov. He's behind the net. Can't get it. After it is Balderas. Cleared around to the far side. So Pancic spinning it in the kicks it along the boards. Joe Grant will hold it in along with uh, Petrov. And it's called for a face-off in Team Canada territory. Well, although it looks like Canada blew uh, an opportunity with Brad Peary moving in, dropped it in the middle of a change, that's when you have to change. You have to change when you go on the other team's end. You can't change when the puck's in your end. There's a lot of pressure on you. And there was a lot of pressure before Canada broke out. And that's the time you have to make the change when you're going the other way with the puck. The face off. Go Canada go here in the Olympic Arena at Lake Placid. Canada and Soviets deadlocked at 1 with 2 19 remaining in the period. Territorially, it's been a Soviet period. Canada's done a pretty good job around its own net. Not had 
a tremendous number of great scoring chances. In against the boards, although the shots on goal wouldn't indicate that. Now in the corner, Joe Grant trying to pin it in there, and it'll be held for a faceoff again to the right of the Canada goal. There's Boris Mihailov, who was only one of three players in the Soviet Union to receive the order of Lenin. He, along with goaltender Vladislav Kutchak, Semelod Bobrov, who played for many, many years with the team, as a defenseman and later was a coach in the Soviet national team. On the face-off, Canada's been doing a pretty good job in the face-off department. 1-11 of 18 so far. Puck is over the line. Len Anderson trying to fight for it now. They go to the area in front of the net. The puck is in the corner. After it in there is Nil. He's being checked. The puck comes out to center ice past Terry O'Malley. Here's a race for Mihailov and O'Malley. Down goes O'Malley playing a little interference there. Gets to it and beats the Mihailov. And that was just uh, some experience on the part of O'Malley. Uh, certainly the much fleeter Mihailov still couldn't get to the puck before he got to him simply because he ran interference. Well, that's what you have to do when you're chasing because remember, you've got to pivot and turn and go back and uh, the opposition just has to go one way fellow in the middle of your picture Brian Engblom of the Montreal Canadiens they flew down I'll tell you they are in a rough schedule right now last night they were in Landover Maryland where they lost to the Washington Capitals flew back last night and then flew into Lake Placid this morning to cheer Canada on I think that's just great three members of the Canadians High March now will take the draw against Makarov at least Golikov on a face-off, quick shot, and a glove save there by goaltender Vladislav Kretschak. Well, the importance again of getting that face-off, and it's interesting that John Devaney was waved out along with Golikov. It was David Heinmarsh who won the face-off to Devaney, who was waved out to get the opportunity. Here's Heinmarsh after the puck in front of the, in the corner now, battling against the boards along with Kazadinov. He goes down, but coming through to pick up that puck was Devaney. Behind the net, he loses it to Fedisov. Fedisov then... Takes it into the corner, it's cleared out to center ice. For the Soviets, down over the line comes Golikov to Makarov. Makarov, number 24, out in front of the net and went off a couple of legs. That is rolled all the way to Fedisov. Fedisov getting the shot away, sliding along the ice to block that one was Randy Gregg. In against the boards. Canada taking over once again, circling with it is Warren Anderson, comes back behind the net, four checking for the Soviets, Makarov, now moving in is Golikov, but the puck is clear to the far boards, Randy Gray gets center ice, over the line it comes, and they call it on two lines I believe, I didn't like to call too much, but 102 remaining in the period, and a 1-1 tie here. John Devaney just moving in between the Soviet defenders, you see him going off as they're making a change, nice little pass from Randy Gregg, just slid it between the defenders, just a half a stride outside of the blue line, where he had an opportunity to move in for a good shot on Fred Jackson. All right, face off will be right at center ice. They'll drop it right on the red line at center ice. And from the face off, it's back. Canada winning yet another draw here as Waters gets it. Waters to Spring. Spring shooting it in. Taking in after it with less than a minute remaining now is Paul McLean, but he loses it. The Soviets feeding it out to center ice. It goes off the stick at center ice of Krutov. And back to get in his own end is Spring. Spring over to the far boards. Starting out for Canada, Waters. Waters out of center ice, busting over center ice was Ken Perry, and he caused a tremendous pileup as he tried to get that pass, and then he managed to even maintain any part of his balance. What comes out to the over the line and is cleared back in. Had he made, maintained any part of his balance, he would have been home free on that. Two Soviet defenders went down. Well, what a check, what a check. Paul McLean just threw a, a tremendous check on the Soviet player. Uh, I believe it was either Vasiliev or, or Verbukin, but he just leveled it. We're going to get a look at it. Just moving in. He's playing the puck with his hand. Just coming. Oh, that hurts. When you're off the boards and you get hammered into them like that, checks like that, it would slow down players. All right, the faceoff will be just outside the blue line with 30 seconds remaining in the first period, a 1-1 deadlock. On the faceoff, cleared back. Break, shooting it in. Because that and off. Healy left it off on the far side. Now out at center ice. And here come the Soviets now down to the line. Carrying the puck is Krutov. He goes into the corner. Krutov looking for a man. And good uh, defensive play there by Warren Anderson to stop play. Now here's a chance for the blue line. And that's kicked out, I believe, by the goaltender or a leg. And Barry, he takes a good hard hit at center ice by Billy Lepinoff. Racing forward is Randy Gregg. He fights off a check, but the puck goes by him, and Barry loses it at center ice to Lepinoff, and the horn goes to end a pretty good first period of hockey. Paul Pajot going off, and you have to give Paul Pajot a lot of the credit because a great deal of that period, Canada was under pressure, especially when they killed successfully. 
uh, two penalties against them. The Soviets having no penalties. Paul Peugeot, all his teammates out, give him a little pat there. What you have to have is that great goaltending in tight hockey games like this. 12-6, the shots on goal officially at the end of the first period. Of course, the Soviet Union had the territorial advantage, but Canada did a pretty good job in their own end of keeping things away from Paul Pajot. So, a 1-1 tie, Canada versus the Soviet Union. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Yeah. As we mentioned at the outset, goaltending could be a key in this game between Canada and the Soviet Union and youngster Paul Pajot, who plays junior in Shawinigan of the Quebec Junior League, has certainly been outstanding in the first period as Canada and the Soviets are deadlocked in a 1-1 tie. We'll have scoring highlights of that game coming up, but earlier today, quite a contest between Sweden and Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia has been eliminated from medal round because they lost today to Sweden. As we review highlights of this game, Kelly Lindbergh in goal for Sweden, Krolik for Czechoslovakia. On a power play, Mats Alberg scores the first goal. He receives a pass from Naslin, number 15, right there. And Alberg scores for Sweden, a power play goal. Holmgren, number 18, also gets an assist. It goes to Naslin, number 15, behind the net. The pass in front to Mats Alberg, and Sweden takes the lead. They increase it to 2-0. Leif Holmgren and again Naslin, number 15, combining on the scoring play. The pass from Naslin to Holmgren. Naslin, number 15, down the left side. And watch him spot Leif Holmgren, and he fires it home. It's 2 nothing for Sweden. And they certainly looked impressive, and their goaltending Kelly Lindbergh there, stopping Preacher, who was set up by Novi. 2 nothing after the first period. Then it was on to the second. And one goal there, Soderstrom to Naslin, number 15. And it's 3-0 for Sweden, although Czechoslovakia outshot Sweden 17-10 in that second period. But the only goal, Naslin, a perfect setup from Soderstrom. 3-0 after 40 minutes of play. On to the third period, Lindbergh, outstanding. Watch the save here he makes on Lukacs, number 21. The youngster Lindbergh, just 19 years of age. Czechoslovakia's Kozar, a brilliant effort here. Lindbergh makes the save, but the puck comes back to Novi. Erickson drops into the net to try to help out his goalie, but unfortunately they got the puck by him. But look at the move by Kozar. Lindbergh makes the save, loses his glove. Novi's there to get the rebound, and Czechoslovakia scores their first goal. Sweden came back to Lundqvist. They're all around, and Pollock made about three saves, but he couldn't stop the final one by Lundqvist, and it was 4-1. Here with Lindbergh pinned out of the net, Kozar sweeps around and sends it into the yawning net, and it's 4-2 for Sweden over Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia outshooting Sweden 43-26. Canada faces a must situation today, either a win or a tie against the Soviet Union, and failing that, they would have to hope that later tonight that Holland defeats Finland or gets one point so Canada would advance into the medal round. But they're really holding their own against the Soviets right now. It's a 1-1 tie after the first period of play. Canada opened the scoring on a goal by Jimmy Nill, the native of Hannibal, Alberta, gave uh, Team Canada the early 1-0 lead. They had to kill off two penalties in that first period as referee Jim Nagels gave penalties to Hindmarsh and Gregg, but they did that successfully. Now here's the first goal, Davidson and Anderson combining with Jimmy Nill, and you'll see Ron Davidson move right in front of the net and screens uh, goaltender Vladislav Tretyak. Now here's the play to Jimmy Nill, and he fires it past Tretyak at 1.35 of the first period. The spectators were on their feet. A great goal by Jimmy Nill. Paul Pajot has been outstanding in goal for Canada. On the one big play in the period, he robbed Krutov from close range as Nil. We get another look at that goal. Now here's Lebedev and Krutov, but Pajot deflects the puck over the top of the net. Just a dazzling display of goaltending by Pajot. And there it is again. He deflects that shot 
from Krutov. The Soviets tied it at 1-1. Alexander Skvortsev, number 26, combining with Zlutov and Helmut Balderas. Skvortsev down the right side, rolls the puck in front. Balderas is there to deflect it past Pajot, although uh, we thought perhaps it had gone off one of the Team Canada defensemen. It's very close. Skvortsev, number 26, just dumps the puck in front. Balderas is there. He gets credit for the goal. And it's a 1-1 tie at this point. But it certainly has been an entertaining 20 minutes of play. Jim Nill scoring for Canada and Sportsef getting the goal for the Soviet Union. And that's how it stands at this moment. A 1-1 tie. We'll be going back to the Olympic Fieldhouse for the second period play-by-play -play coming up. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Here's Tom and Ron. All right, back at the Olympic Fieldhouse, a 1-1 tie. Jim Nill with his first goal of this Olympic Games, and Helmut Balderas with his fifth goal. And Canada did a pretty good job in that first period of playing defense in their own end. A lot of territorial play for the Soviets, but the shots on goal, we have an official count of 12 to 6. We should mention right here that Brian Smith of CJOH Ottawa is doing his own statistics on this game. And Brian came up with a shots on goal total more like 16 to 4. But as I said, a lot of them from bad angles. A lot of shots have been blocked by the defense. The Team Canada has done a good job in that department. The puck is cleared from the faceoff down into the Soviet end. The finish off around the boards on this side. It is taken and cleared out by Harlem off the center ice. He can't get by the defense. And coming back is Randy Gregg. There's a shot. He scores! The Soviets have the puck once again. Sarikov trying to beat it along the boards. Couldn't. He has to go back into his own end for it. In for checking for Canada. That's Maxwell. Maxwell can't reach it as it's cleared up to center ice. McLean over to Waters on this side. Boy, the crowd's come alive here as Maxwell shoots it in. McLean going in deep for it. Maxwell trailing. He's got the puck. Maxwell flipping it along the boards. Chasing it, but the Soviets have it. Coming out of his own zone now. Down over the line. For the Soviets, it's cleared behind the net. Canada takes over once again. Spring, he can't get it by. A puck is cleared to the side of the net. Hugging the post there is Pajot. They waltz it around behind the net. And now Canada coming away with it. Starting out is Maxwell. Maxwell over to Waters. Out at center ice for McLean. It went right through his legs. Maxwell trailing on the play. Maxwell at the side. And he got a backhand shot away. Now it's McLean. McLean unable to get by the door checking of Balderas. Back inside the zone, flipped off the back boards. And out to center ice, the Soviets down over the line, overskating the puck on the right wing was Makarov. Now Canada, Maxwell, getting into the blue line. Now there's a shot that trips wide of the net off the leg. Waters behind the net, he pins it in against the netting, and it's called for a face-off. Well, the teams will change. Canada's taken the lead. We're a minute and a half into the second period. They lead 2-1. to one. There's the referee, Jim Nagels. From the United States, all of the officials in this game are American. Well, I'd like to recall some penalties against the Soviets. Right there, Balderas just gave Donnie Spring a shot. There he's pushing behind the net. Team Canada trying to keep them away. There's a little shot, a little tap. That's what we don't want to do. We don't want to retaliate there. But no, there doesn't seem to be any penalties for the Soviets. They got a credit card. Victor Golikov facing off against Ron Davidson from the faceoff there. Who can lose in, but it'll be called a, 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 a some infraction along the rim of the faceoff circle. There's the team captain, the hero of the moment, Dr. Randy Gregg. And close up there, Vladimir Golikov. 
for the faceoff. Back to Karabukin. He winds up. The shot is blocked by Neil out in center ice race for the puck with Anderson. They're coming across and cutting off any further play there with Vinny Lettinoff from the right defense spot. Now it's cleared out over center ice. Just getting a stick on it to break that play up with Joe Grant of Canada. Come great right back. Over the line comes Davidson. Davidson trying to get around Makarov. It goes into the corner. Racing after it on the side is Grant. It's cleared out to center ice. And coming across ice is Terry O'Malley. O'Malley beating it along the board. Now turning. It's Alexander Golikov. Anderson, he is partially checked, but the puck comes over the line now. With it is Makarov looking for a man in front. Here's a chance. The shot is wide of the net. It comes out to Bear Hukin. Bear Hukin into the corner. Grant's got it. Grant flipping it behind the net. There's nobody there. Makarov gets it out of play. His chance for the show. It's another shot, and it's off the shoulder of Pajot and into the corner. Good stand-up goaltending there by Pajot. Out at center ice. Down the line. Peary. Peary working for the corner. Still got that puck as he fights his way behind the net. Peary doing a great job as he is spun around at the side of the net. Peary still in after it, also moving in as Dal Beast. The Soviets try to bring it out, but it's intercepted by Zubacic. Here's the shot. shoots it in behind his own net carrying the puck is waters waters coming out waters on the right boards for mclean out at center race it's off the skate of barry he's been all over the ice tonight barry trying to roll it in front of the net for maxwell it rolls right to the goal mouth and is steered away to petrov petrov flipping it out over center ice no icing on this one as waters goes back along with harlemoff harlemoff goes down so does waters and waters appears to be shaken up a bit on that play although he's up on his feet the puck is clear to the far boards and barry Barry shooting it out to center ice, stopping up out of center ice and bringing it to McLean. McLean, what a one a shot, and oh, what a save there by Tretiak as he picked up what was, I thought, a screenshot. Good move at the line, and Tretiak had to come up big on that one. Kenny Barry moving into the hole. Here's the check. Harmelov and Waters going into the boards together. Waters gets turned around. There you see the pain on his face going down, hitting the boards. Paul McLean coming back. A quick shot using the defenseman as a screen. Trechak loving the puck, holding it for the faceoff. An interesting statistic here in faceoffs one, and we've got one now, an important one deep in the zone. Canada has won 21 of the 31 faceoffs in this game. It's always a department that Canada has excelled in against the Soviets. And it can be a very important statistic. Here's a chance to get the puck up in the zone now. In is Davidson. He's out in front and panning out of the spring. That's one in front. Oh, what a good chance there for Davidson. Now another chance for Canada. A shot. It's right on. Loose puck. Down goes. Trent Jackets underneath him. Canada with a really putting the pressure on here in the second period. And they've got a 3-1 lead. 
Well, Trichak coming up with two excellent stops on that series, and he has to come up with those saves. Canada just pulling out all stops here early in the second period. The two quick balls. The original shot just being stuck through. The deflection, he goes low from Davidson. Gets it. The puck is moved. Jimmy Nill lobs it in again. The second opportunity by Glennie Anderson. Trichak making a good move to stop and kill that puck. Interesting statistic here. The shots on goal, 7 to nothing, favor Canada in this period. And they've got two goals to show for it. Broken a 1-1 tie. We played four minutes, 43 seconds here in the period. The puck is out to center ice. O'Malley getting it at the boards, beating it along. Working it along the boards is Jimmy Nill, and it's cleared in by Nill. It bounces right back past Pitisoff. Cleared around the boards. Hard check thrown in there. The puck is out at center ice. Here come the Soviets, two on one. Down over the line now. Golikov right to get it in front. It's broken up by Terry O'Malley. Now the Canadians come back at center ice. Over the line. It's Anderson cutting in front of the net. It's loose the shot just over top of the net. Petisov steered that one into the corner. Petisov, and he uh, got a penalty being called here, I believe, as the play is whistled down. Great chance for Canada. Joe Grant just moved up quickly on that play to create the three-on-two opportunity, but I see Joe Limping going to the bench. You better get some ice on that because we need all the troops that we can get in this hockey game. We need all the bodies we have and all the legs we have. Soviet defender going off on the play, but Grant moving in. There's Grant with that shot just missing the top corner. Kutchak not able to get it. The puck bouncing over the net, coming back out. Benisov will go off for hooking at 4-10. There he hits for the penalty bench right now, shaking his head. Correct that time. It is 5-10 here in the period. 5-10 on the second period, and Canada has the first power play advantage of the hockey game for them. They were shorthanded twice in the first period and killed it off both times. For the faceoff, now it's rolled over to the far side. And now the Soviets with Maltsev intercepting that clearing pass. Now he is stopped right at the blue line. He started to fiddle around with it a little too much. And moving in and making a check against him was Warren Anderson. And instead of having a, to regroup down to their own end, they managed to get the face off against the boards in Soviet territory. Well, one of the things you have to be careful with the Soviets, uh, Canada wants to put the pressure on here, but they'll attack you. If they get the opportunity, they won't just lob that puck out. They'll attack and try to make a play offensively, even over short. High mark. Cross ice. Zubancic couldn't knock it down. That comes along the floor. It's Greg knocked down. So it's Maltzev as he tried to get around Greg. Good job there by Greg as Maltzev tried to circle him on the play. Now Randy Greg turning in his own end. Ahead at center ice. Zubancic. Zubancic hooked as he tried to get the pass over to Maltzev uh, to uh, Del Beast. Canada still with that puck. Now Anderson over to Zubancic. He's over the line. He passes into the corner, stopped up against the board, moving in to check him on the play as Lebedev, and it's cleared down into Team Canada territory with 114 left in the power play. Behind his own net, Warren Anderson. He'll carry the puck himself as he lugs it to the blue line to center ice. Anderson hitting the line now, shooting it in, cleared around the boards. After there is Starikov, cleared around the boards, and stopped on the boards on this side by Dalvis. Moving in is Greg to throw a check to the puck and cleared down the ice, and back to get it for Canada will be Anderson once again. Anderson with Pajua way out of his net. Soviets have changed on the fly. Now Canada with Anderson carrying the puck at center ice. Clears it over to Devaney. Devaney trying to circle the defense. Gets into the corner. Devaney. Now Canada controlling it. Working to the side of that. And a shot. And it just went wide. It's cutting out in front of that net was Kevin Primo. Now again it's rolled out in front. And the Soviets come away with it. At center ice. Carrying that puck over to the far side. And there'll be a penalty called. And it's tripped up on the play. Was Vasiliev on that breakout. And so Canada will have the remaining 26 seconds of their power play nullified, and McLean will go on. Well, again, this is the acting that the Soviets do, and, and uh, it, it was a hook. There's no question about it, but it may not have been called unless uh, Vasiliev takes the dive. Here we see Paul McLean coming back. He's got that stick on him. See, he could have got down maybe around that a little bit. The hook was there. There's no question about that. But I'm not so sure whether Vasiliev had to go down. I think he should have carried on with that puck to the net. He went down to draw the penalty, make sure it was called. Well, if you're going to go down, might as well emphasize it. Claire Drake, the coach, along with Lauren Davis, behind the bench of Team Canada. And the faceoff will be outside the blue line. The team's playing at five aside right now, but 
In 25 seconds or so, Canada will be at a manpower disadvantage. They lead this game 3-1 to one against the boards. Heinmark, Heinmark digging into the Soviet zone. Along with him is Karavukin. Karavukin throws the check on him. It's cleared around the boards to the other side. Mihailov, Mihailov trying to get it out in front. Elects to shoot it behind his net to Karavukin. Now up to Harlamov. A ring wide pass to Mihailov. He's down over the line. Mihailov on the boards. Gives it to Harlamov. Harlamov stopping in the corner. Back out to the blue line. The penalty is over to Fittisov. He's on the ice and in the play now. Harlamov against the far board. Harlamov. Harlamov trying to roll it in front. It's down and loose in there. And underneath, Tim Waters cut across and called for a faceoff with 121 left in the penalty to ball the play. Well, the, the favorite Soviet play on the power play, they like to move their defensemen right down off the edge of the crease. And that's what Fedosov was doing after he comes. You can't see him on the right-hand side of your picture. But uh, David Heimarsh can't see him. Here he comes, right in the edge of the picture. That's the defenseman there, moving down off the edge, trying to get the opportunity. But they like to move those defensemen down for the, uh, the shot off the edge of the crease when they have the man advantage. Face off, and it's back to the blue line. Controlled by Kazanov against the boards for Harlemov. Harlemov. Petrov and Mihailov out there. There's Fedosov with it. In for Petrov. He's the centerman on the line. And Fedosov got it out over the line to keep back in offside. Hopped over Fedosov's stick as he tried the stick handle. And they're arguing for an intentional offside. Lenny Anderson is. I don't think they're going to get it. And the face-off will be outside the blue line. There's Glenn Anderson, the youngest member of Team Canada at the age of 19. And what a hockey player this young fella is. Burnaby, B.C., Davidson will take the draw. Davidson, Anderson, Spring, and Waters, the penalty killers. Petrov facing off from the faceoff. They're down over the line, and Anderson hoists it down the ice. Petrov will corral it down in his own zone. Petrov circling back behind his own net, and the organized things now is Petrov. Starts out, gives it to Harlem off. The pass was behind him, and is cleared inside the goal by Neil. Neil cutting in front of that deal on the backhand of Davidson. Davidson. And he couldn't get the shot away, and he stepped in front of the net, and there will be a penalty call. Anderson and Neil got in there and really got things messed up, and it very nearly led to a goal, but did draw a penalty. Well, Kenny Anderson just taking uh, the bull by the horns and trying to move right across. It looked like he was too deep to make some kind of a play, but you have to remember that extra three feet in international hockey behind the net. He seems to go very deep, but then walks right out in front of the net. Jimmy Neil slipping on the puck, and he looks to be deep. Really deep. He comes right out in front of the net, across from the edge. Kazatnov pulls him down. As he's going down, he tries to scoop it underneath Trechak with the penalty of the Soviets. Kazatnov, number seven for the Soviets, is in the penalty box. McLean has 46 seconds remaining in his penalty. The time of the penalty to Kazatnov for tripping at 7.58. So they are even. They will be even for 46 seconds, barring further penalties, and then Canada will go back on the power play once again. Huck is against the boards. It's flipped behind the net. Vasilia couldn't knock it down. Starikov behind the net, and right in on top of him is Devani. Now the Soviets with Starikov in possession. Out at center ice. There's it down into Team Canada territory. After it is Anderson. And uh, what's happened here now? Offside at the line, and it'll, or do we have a penalty being? Oh, it's icing. All right, we've got it straight. And Nagels will call him to come back down into the Soviet zone for a face-off to the right of Vladislav, or Vyacheslav, it's Vladislav Kretyak. There you see the story. The Soviet in the penalty box is Kasatinov. 28 seconds left in the penalty to Paul McLean. He is standing up in the penalty bench from the face-off for the Soviets. Makarov. Makarov coming up the right towards the center ice now. Makarov is down over the line, chasing him in spring. Makarov trying to sweep around the defense. Stops up in the corner. Feeds it back to the blue line to Vasiliev. Vasiliev over to start. Starts off. He got a shot right on. Now it's in the corner. They wrestle for it in there, and they'll draw the face-off to the right of Pasho. And the Team Canada goal with seven seconds left in the penalty to McLean. I love to see this because now we know we've got the Soviets on the run. They're getting upset. Golikov upset. That extra little thrust. They're a little talking to one another. I noticed number 13, the Soviet captain, Mikhailov, yakking at the rest of his players. And they're upset. Maltsev chewing at the referee. All these little indications you don't usually see from the Soviet team. They're beginning to become a little frustrated. Down 3-1 almost halfway through the game. What you just saw, by the way, on the Team Canada goal was the first shot in this period for the 
the Soviets. What a great defensive job Canada has been doing, along with, of course, their offense. And with the old line, their best defense is a good offense. But they have had territorial control here. Face off, slooped off, the tallest member of the Soviet team at 6 3. Facing off against Randy Gregg from the face off there. Vukin moves in, and his shot is blocked by Pajot. Dead on. Now, here's McLean out on the ice. He's uh, finished up with his penalty now. It's cleared out over center ice. McLean racing after it. After it down there as well as Karbukin. McLean gets in there. No icing on the play. McLean tying things up now. Clears it to the side of the net. Canada trying to get out in front. That's Maxwell in there. Now, around the net it goes. Perry. Perry out to the blue line. Perry gets the return pass. In against the boards. Breaks in deep. Watch him in front of that net now. Here's the big shot. Now it's cleared in the corner on a given goal type play. And Perry was hooked on the play. Couldn't get in. Now it's cleared in front. And it's intercepted and cleared out to center ice by the Soviets. That was Baldera shooting it down the ice and back to get it is Warren Anderson. Now he feeds it off on the right boards for Maxwell. 34 seconds left of the power play. Maxwell shooting it in. Around the boards to the far side. In deep is McLean. He can't reach that puck on the Soviets. Start to bring it out again. At center ice. Down over the line comes Slutkoff. Slutkoff trying to cut through the defense. He's unable to. Turning and coming back with the puck for Canada is Randy Gray. Greg at center ice. Greg hitting the line. Greg dropping it back, and there was nobody there. McLean did not expect that pass. It's cleared out over center ice. Intercepted by Terry O'Malley. Back over the line. The seven seconds remaining in the power play as Maxwell goes into the corner. Maxwell circling with it. Three to one. Canada leading over to this side, and it was spanned on by Dana, by uh, Anderson. It's behind the net. Barry's got it. Barry over to the far boards now. Taken by Maxwell. Maxwell in deep. They're trying to get it to Anderson in front, but he is unable to get it. There's a big collision back there. The penalty is over. And it's Maxwell. Maxwell in the corner. He is checked off the puck by Schlutkoff. Players go down, but Barry, who's been all over the ice in this hockey game, feeds it out to center ice. Anderson. Anderson getting it over for Terry O'Malley inside his own blue line. O'Malley at center ice, feeding it into the corner. After it is Jimmy Nill behind the net. Nill being checked in against the boards. And is whistled dead on the icing, so it'll be called back into the Team Canada zone. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Well, they've got the area right in front of the Team Canada net completely bottled up right now. If we get a wide shot out of, of it, you'll see it, but the face-off to the right of the Team Canada goal from the face-off. It's Canada trying to kick it away. They do. Front to center ice now. Here's Anderson breaking loose. Anderson with Neil coming up behind. Anderson stopped up. Beats the Neil. And Neil had got behind Fedesov, but he couldn't knock down that puck. Now it's down in the corner in Soviet territory and held for another face-off with 9-11 remaining in the period and a little shoving going on. So as Tom mentioned a couple of moments ago, the Soviets are getting stirred up a little bit. Canada has been doing a good job of laying on the body in this game. There's Buddy Anderson. And I believe he's going to be heading for the penalty bench. So Anderson is going off, but they're going off with him will be Kazatinov for the second time in a row. So Kazatinov goes off, probably roughing. There's White and Dotting, the figure skating pair for Canada in the audience. A lot of celebrities here to watch this game. George Allen, the former coach of the Los Angeles Rams and Washington Redskins here. Anderson and Kazanov go off. 10.49 will be the time, so players, the teams will be short of man. Each team, three to one, Canada is leading. They play just a tremendous period. Kazadinov, the call on Kazadinov, I believe it's for tripping. Here's the passage inside over the blue line now, into the corner it goes. After it is Dalvis, Dalvis circling away. It's kept in, right in on uh, Kretziak. He made the save on the short side, and picking it off is Mihailov. He shoots it out to center ice, much out for Petrov out there. He's behind Spring. Now here's Mihailov, down over the line he comes. Mihailov. Mihailov circling the net. Cutting in front of the net there for the Soviets is Vasiliev. It's back to the blue line for Starikov. Here's the shot. It trips in and hit the back, I believe, of Mihailov. He's got the puck. Out to the blue line. The shot by Petrov. And it rolls to the side of the net. After this spring in there, he flips it along the boards. For Canada, it's Del Vise. Del Vise out at center ice for Zipatsic. A two-line pass. And it's called for the faceoff. Don't forget, tomorrow, CTV. The coverage of the... 13th Winter Olympics here in Lake Placid, New York. 
A couple of the Soviet skaters we see as well. Well, we've got some... A lot of people interested, of course, as they always are when Canada plays the Soviet Union in hockey. And right now, Canada's leading this one, three to one. It's for the faceoff. Warren Anderson clearing it around the boards. On this side, Randy Gregg chasing it down. And Gregg comes to center ice along with Devaney. He just fires it in. Devaney's digging in there after it. Also in there is Billy Lipton off, but he loses the puck in the corner. Now it's clear back to the blue line. Here's Randy Gregg setting up the screen. And he's just wide with it. The puck bounces all the way back out to center ice. Turning with it is Anderson. Anderson. Anderson starting at center ice now. Anderson ahead over the line now. Hindmarch into the corner. Hindmarch taking a check in there. Covering in uh, to cover up is Devaney. Devaney is chased into the boards on this side. Now it's Hindmarch. Hindmarch hooked on the play. Devaney gets it in the corner again. He'll try to get it back up to the point he does. Great shooting it in. Back to get it behind the Soviet net is Vasilyev. Vasilyev starting out. Slowly starting out. Now feeds it behind. Makarov with center ice and Greg simply had to shoot it right back out to center ice. Primo race court with Fury. Fury's over the line. Fury into the corner. Fury with Primo cutting in front of the net. It's pinned in against the boards. It's called for faceoff. And the faceoff will be in deep Soviet territory. Well, what Team Canada has to do at this point, the 7.23 remaining, is that they have to protect the three-goal lead if they get the opportunities to move into the to the good areas to get the shots all right, all well and good. There we see Belladina, who is off the ice, apparently just hit over the eye. We saw him go off the ice a little earlier. One of the stalwart defensemen of the Soviet team. 12 seconds remaining in the penalties to Anderson. Who's up on his feet in the penalty box and Kazanov. The face-off will be to the left. Canada, by the way, has won 27 face-offs to just 15 for the Soviets. And Canada's got possession again. As Walter Grotto in there, thinking a whack at it there. And completely tied up on the play was Kevin Primo. It's out of center ice and bounces over the stick in Canada territory. It's uh, Finisov and clears it away, but he put it right on the stick of Kevin Maxwell. Maxwell at center ice, hitting the line. Maxwell getting set in front. There's the shot. And a good save as it goes into the corner. Anderson clearing it around on this side for Maxwell. Maxwell digging in against the boards. Flipped it into the corner. There's nobody there. The puck is clear, but not out. He's kept in. Here's Barry skating along the line. Barry is checked off the puck. Out in center ice. Love it up. Love it up. Tried to put it out into the slot area and went off the skate of Grant. And Grant has got it behind the net. Grant starting out on the left side now. Grant, he's stopped on the play. Here's Mihailov breaking in. Mihailov trying to get set in front of the net. They rolled it in front of right there. It's Anderson back checking and he comes away with it. Anderson at center ice with Mihailov getting to him. And finally he lost the front at the blue line. Canada changed on the fly now as the Soviets come out. Lebedev, great pass for Mihailov. He's all alone. This shot is over top of the net. Great chance for Mihailov. Now third out to Minnesota. Here's his shot. Oh, that comes just off the shoulder of Terry O'Malley. And it's cleared out to center ice once again. Back to get it to Zanonov. Right at his own blue line. He takes a hit right at the line there by McLean. In comes Canada again in front. He shoots. It's loose in front. Barry wagging away at it. The net comes out of inches of Canada. And a tremendous chance. Well, forget about Canada's chance. I'm furious with the Murs. The linesman wasn't in position. The Kyle off and took the pass. I, I hope he can get this on a replay. Had to be a stride and a half inside the blue line onside. The linesman was two strides behind the blue line. In no way can do it. And here we have the opportunity uh, just inside moving for Team Canada. Kenny Berry all alone in front of the net. There's the tip. Kutchak going down, making a good stop. Coming back after the good opportunity from Mikhailov. And there we have, what is this? Putting the guy into the goal post and off. What, what are they? They've got the credit card for no penalties. Face off in the right of... Uh... The Soviet goal from the faceoff. Again, Canada getting a shot away on that one. It's cleared along the boards. Waters keeping it in. Waters around behind the net. Over on the far side, Jimmy Neal digging it after. It's cleared along the boards. Kept in. Neal fighting for it. But the Soviets have the puck now. It's cleared in front of the net. And they start out. Starikov with that lead pass. Goes all the way down the ice. And waved off. No icing on this one. is Spring. Turning in the corner. On top of him is Skortsov. Also moving in to help out is Davidson. Into the corner of this side for Waters. Waters along the boards. Glenn Anderson. Canada leading 3-1 to one. if you've just joined us. It was 1-1 one, one at the end of the first period. Turning, coming right back now. Over the line. It is Sportsoff. Into the corner. Sportsoff. Just back to passing that one. Trying to get around the board check. At least the checking of Canada. Now Davidson in behind the net. Davidson piling in against the boards. Also in there is Paul Darius. It'll be held for a faceoff. Again in Team Canada territory with 5-10 remaining here in the second period. A good move. When in doubt, you don't throw a flag in your own zone. And Team Canada winning the 
majority of the face-offs. If you're a little mixed up in your own end, get the face-off. Balderas moving in, coming in a little late there, getting the shot. The puck is all loose. Team Canada, not just throwing away blind. Ronnie Davidson holding on to it, holding on to it. Get that face-off. You win the draw, then you get organized in the own zone to bring the puck out. Shots on goal, by the way, right now unofficially. 11-2 favor Canada which is a total indication of what the way this period has gone. Canada has played tremendous defensively and have given themselves for their defensive play some great opportunities offensively. There's Brian Engel to the right of your screen. There's Doug Jarvis in the crowd as well, the Montreal Canadiens. I'm sure that they're pretty proud of what Canada has done so far in this hockey game. Take time off from a busy schedule, and they, of course, play again tomorrow night, so they're really busy. They were in Washington last night. Bucket cleared out to center right. Cutting to the line, over the line. Canada inside the zone again. Dalvis in the corner. Dalvis poking it along the boards for the Soviets. Take it away. And it's cleared out to center ice. Mihailov ahead. Marlamov. Marlamov over the line. He's being checked by Anderson and he slammed in. There's Petrov clearing it right out to center ice between the defensemen. And now we've got a penalty coming up. And there goes Tretiak out of the net. And Soviets now will try to control things in their own end. It's cleared away. Canada trying to control it. Can't out of the blue zone. Now comes Marlamov. Marlamov over the bar side for Lebedev. Over the line. Now it's dropped off. Mihailov back to the blue line for Vasiliev. The shot is wide of the net. And it is called for the hooking penalty against Canada. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Brad Peary going off for hooking in this one at 15.45. Trying to get set now with our alignments. The penalty killers out there for Canada will be Hindmarch, Primo, and back at the blue line. It'll be Don Spring and also Waters. The power play, the Petrov line with Harlamov, Mahaila. Fedosov will be out there. Also, along with, along the blue line, Pesatonov, number seven, behind the net now. Pajot just leaving it there. Now at the side of the net, it's behind the net. Don Spring will pin it in there and hold it. And take the face off in Canadian territory with 150 remaining in the penalty 405 left in the period. Kyle off a little frustrated. He's talking to his teammates there, wanting to know where they were when that puck went around. An interesting face off alignment just inside or outside the team can the blue line where the Soviets place four players across the line when they have the man advantage trying to get the quick break just in front of your blue line. Waters was going to take the draw against Petrov now. It'll be spring. They use the defenseman to take the draw in the zone. I see that quite often, Tom. On the faceoff, we have to explain why in a little while. Here's Mihailov behind the net. Mihailov along the boards for Petrov. Petrov is against the boards now. Heimarch takes a swipe at him. Petrov looking for that man in front. Back to Mihailov, back to Petrov. Petrov in the corner. Petrov rolling it out in front now, and it is steered away by Pajo. Here's a shot from the blue line by Kasatinov, and it's cleared along the course by Waters. In against the boards, taken by Mihailov. Mihailov trying to get it back. Kasatinov's in deep now as they move Harlamov back to the point. Kasatinov to Harlamov. Back to Kasatinov against the boards. Kasatinov over for Fedosov. Went off his skate, now to center ice. And back to get it will be Harlamov in his own end, and right in on top of him as Heimarch is cleared along the boards. And Fedosov, or at least Petrov, Petrov turning for Mihailov. Mihailov, the captain, over the line. It's dropped off. Fedosov then shot it high remaining it'll be called for a face off 104 remaining in the penalty well the theory behind the defenseman taking the draw in the, in the own zone you have to assume in your own end of the rink that you're going to lose the face off and that all your players are in a position to move up and cover well, that's why the defenseman takes the draw if we have a forward take the draw we lose it it goes to that point there is no one to chase the point this way the defenseman tries to tie it up we try to get a stalemate if he wins it in behind him he's one on one with their face off man and we're not at a disadvantage but we assume we're going to lose the draw but we're in a good position to cover i'll tell you something a fellow used to do that with a lot of success back in the 60s was punch imlac he used to like to do that using carl brewer as a face-off man many times so i think they legislated against him. carl used to interfere and now the puck is thrown down the ice by canada exactly a minute left in the penalty now 313 remaining in deep puck is cleared behind the net and out to the blue line of center ice now. Here come the Soviets. Down over the line. Racing after it is Makarov. Rats in there on top of him. It's dropped off. One of the Golikov brothers has it now. Starikov back to Golikov. That's Vladimir Golikov. Into the corner. Out in front. Alexander Golikov getting it across. Fake shot here. Makarov trying to get in front of the net. And he's faced forced back. And behind the net once again. Back up to Starikov at the blue line. He winds up. Oh, and it's blocked very neatly there by Lenny Anderson. And it goes all the way down the ice. Anderson sliding like a defenseman to block that one. Boy, a great effort being put in by Canada here. Now it's cleared over for the 
Vasiliev. He gets it over the line. Golikov shooting it in. Into the corner it goes. Alexander Golikov on this side. Up to Sarikov. Back to Golikov. Behind the net now. Taken by Golikov again. And Vlad uh, Vladimir Golikov. Into the corner. Alexander Golikov to Sarikov. In the blue line. Back to Golikov. Golikov getting set. This shot is well wide at the net. And the penalty is over. And Geary's back on the ice. They killed off another one. 2.09 remaining in the period. It's behind the net now. The Soviets try to jam it in. And it rolls out in front. Here's the shot. It's blocked in the defense. And they whack away at it. And it's brutal over to the far boards now. Taken by Vasilia. He shoots it in. It's gloved and shot down the ice by Terry O'Malley. And will get icing on this one. Is going back for it. And touching it in his own zone is Sergei Starikov. Well, we'll take the icing to get the change. Cannon under tremendous pressure. Still holding on to that three here. Here. They certainly should be standing. I think the effort the team cam has put in this game was typified by Tony Anderson moving out to the point and blocking that shot, just selling out completely to block the shot from the point, the puck going out into the neutral zone. And that's the type of effort that Canada's had all night from this club. Now, we talk about defensive play. The penalty filling has just been great. No shots on goal during that power play by the Soviets. And they have not been able to score on their power play, and they've had opportunity in this game. Puck is behind the net now. Moving in is Randy Gregg. They play roll it out in front, and it's steered away. And against the boards now. Bang goes to center ice. That center ice is knocked out. Billy left it off. He takes a hit by McLean out there, and it's cleared right wide. On the far side, Shlukov over the line. Clears it behind the net. Pajol can't reach it, but Gregg goes in against the boards. Gregg unable to control it against the boards as Balderas is in there. Now Gregg's got it. He flips it around to the far side and picked up by Anderson. Anderson at center ice for McLean. He knocked that pass down, feeds it in now for Barry. Barry going in, and he couldn't get through the defense. After it in the corner is Pervukin. Pervukin out to center ice, pass Greg. It rolls all the way down in Team Canada territory. Flipping it into the corner there is Pajot. He rolls it out in front. Coming back very neatly on that play is Maxwell. He clears it along the board. It's kept in for the Soviets by Billy Lindemann. Here comes Canada, the long lead pass. Barry gets it, but he had to stop up at the blue line to stop the offside. And that, of course, when you stop up, you just don't have any momentum going. And they caught up to him. Now here comes Canada again. They're checking great. Maxwell over the line with Barry. Maxwell is written off the puck, but I believe he was offside at the line, and it's called for a face-off. Kevin Maxwell shaking his head. He exchanged a few little gloves in the nose with Belladinov, who was back on the ice after going to the bench for repairs. Here he makes the move, goes a little to the outside. There's Belladinov with a straight arm. Maxwell comes back. <laughs> Belladinov comes back, exchanging straight arms, going outside. The first one was a sort of a, a little jab right into the nose make anybody angry. Kevin Maxwell, Chilliwack, B.C., a student at the University of North Dakota and an All-American at the University of North Dakota. 41 seconds remaining in the period. Going into the corner after it now is Fedosov. It's cleared along the boards now, and the Soviets will come out at center ice. They lead the rush now. Krugoff is over the line. Krugoff going in, and he is wrestled to the ice. And it's flipped out over the blue line with 27 seconds left in the second period. Cleared in over the line. Starting out for Canada, it's Spring, the high mark. High mark tried to bat it off the boards. He stopped at the plate. Rudolf is over the line now with Lebedev cutting to the area in front of the net. He tries to get set. It's rolled out of the slot. Here's the shot. He scores! The Soviet Union has scored with 13 seconds left in the second period to narrow it to 3-2. to two. And if there's ever a time you don't want to see a goal score, it's at this stage of a period. Well, uh, you have to get the Soviets mark marks. Young Krutov made about three or four excellent moves. Here he is handling the puck, and he's the guy that came back against Finland, going wide, holding on. Here's the first move, inside, and then you see the defenseman moving right down. That's what the Soviets love to do. Kasatinov moving right inside the top of the circle. They come with those defensemen. They don't just stay on the points, especially when they've got you on the run. They take a good percentage shot from the top of the circle. Paul Peugeot's falling, trying to stop it, but the puck goes underneath him. That's out and off from Krutov at 1947. The puck is rolled to the side of the net. We've got six seconds remaining in the period now as it comes up to Kazanov at the blue line. His shot is blocked in the defense. Canada takes over. That'll be it. Canada outscores the Soviets 2-1 to one in the period. And there's Paul Pajot. He's done a great job for Canada. But you've got to give it a total team effort here after two periods. Canada is right in this one and lead it. Three to two. But over 14 seconds, those 14 seconds, if it was a 3-1 lead going in, then we'd be really tough to catch at this point. 3-2, we're going to have to work right to the end to preserve that. Here we get another look at the goal. Does that not just moving in, just at the end of the period? The puck going underneath Peugeot, the good play being made by Krutov, just shoveling into the slot after he makes the move from the edge. 
The Soviet defenseman, as we said before, moving in for the top, good percentage shot from the top of the circle. The official shots on goal, 11 to 5. Favor Canada in the period. Uh, we had a total of 11 to 4, so we're very close this period at least. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. One has to be impressed with the play of our Canadian Olympic team. They lead by one goal heading into the third period. In the second, they built up a 3-1 lead at one point. They had seven shots on goal in the first four minutes before the Soviets were able to get a shot at Paul Pajot. Captain Randy Gray scores after just 19 seconds of play in that second period as he takes the puck away from Harlamov right here. Greg goes in, a good move on Kazadinov, and Randy Greg scores for Canada, and it's 2-1. to one. Look at the replay. Harlamov is stopped by Randy Greg, number four. Look at the move here on Kazadinov, and Greg lets go with a drive off Tretiak's glove after just 19 seconds in the second period. Then Canada moved in front, 3-1. Stelio Zupancic makes a big play just inside the blue line. Zupancic right here gets the puck to Brad Peary. And Peary beats Trechak. 3-1 for Team Canada. Peary, the former junior with Peterborough of the OHA. Here is Peary's low hard drive. And that's 2.38 of the second period. The Soviets got on the scoreboard later in the period as we get another look at the goal by Brad Curry, the camera angle right behind Tretiak. Now Krutov does all the work here, number nine, back to Kazadinov, and it just trickles by Canadian goaltender Paul Pajot. But the youngster Krutov right here does all the work for the Soviets, spots Kazadinov, and his shot eludes goaltender Paul Pajot, and that goal coming in the last minute. Coming up, the third period. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. We're coming to you live in the biggest period of hockey that these young fellows from Canada will play. And they have a one-goal lead going into the third period against the Soviet Union. Really, the period is for a gold medal opportunity. Canada winning this game would get first place in the division. They don't have to play the Soviets again. Sweden and the United States each have to play the Soviets. Canada already has two points in the Soviets going into that round. Canada would be in an excellent position for a gold medal with the win here today. Now there's a the young fella, Paul Pajot, from Shawinigan, Quebec. At least from Gatineau, Quebec, near Hull. But he plays in Shawinigan in Quebec Major Junior Hockey and over East Junior. The puck is cleared in now, and we're underway here in the third period. And Tom Watt has a line, a word, a single word written in front of him that says discipline. And that's the story, I think, as the puck is frozen in the Canadian zone. Canada must maintain their cool here in the third period. And we're not just talking about the discipline about your tempo. We're talking about the discipline and playing your position, doing the job that you were taught to do, not trying to do everybody else's job. Just do your own. Just do it. Just stay with it. There are the goaltenders. Kretschak and Pajol from the faceoff now. The Soviets move in. After it there is Kazadinov. Gets it behind the net. Kazadinov has their second goal. The Soviet second goal. He's got it behind the net. Now rolls it out in front. They take a whack at it. But here comes Canada. Two on two. Out of the zone. Heimarch carrying. Heimarch with Primo over the line. Heimarch going in. Takes a shot. It goes off. Good as off. Heimarch into the corner now. Trying to get in there for Canada. Not able to get his stick on it. It's Devaney. And again, Canada getting it at center ice. And Heimarch had to pick up his glove. And it just took a whack. At it. Canada's coming back in over the line. Now, the batting shot is right on. It's kicked away by Trenchak. Into the corner it goes. The batting trying to bend it in. Heinmarch is there, but the puck is cleared up to center right, racing down the left. The right boards rather than Mihailov, but he stopped on the play. And again, Canada's over the line. The pass went right by Devaney at center ice. Holomov goes down. Ketchup over the line. He trips by over the top of the net, and the puck is at the side of the net. Golfed off the board by Spring. Devaney along the boards, along with Kasadanov. It comes out to center ice. Holomov. Beating it back to Fedosov, a hit for Petrov. Petrov gives to Mihailov, Mihailov into the slot. Here comes Harlemov on the back end, trying to get set. He goes in deep. Around the net, he goes out in front. It gets caught up with a bunch of players. And Canada tries to bring it out at the blue line. McLean now out at center right. Devaney racing after it. Devaney. Devaney at center right, banging it off the boards. Canada will go for the change now. As 
Goff makes it behind his own net. Barry in for checking, throws McLean. Number 17 is off McLean's stick. On the boards on the side, Alexander Golikov. At center right, Maxwell goes down. Golikov, a hit. Over the line now, Golikov, the shot is tripped wide of the net by Mihailov. Rolls out in front of the net, Maxwell batting it away. Now here comes Kazanov, the shot right in front of the net. They shoot again. Did it go in? Yes, it did. That came right out, and the Soviets have tied this game up at three. The melee in front of Paul Pajot, he didn't get a good look at that puck, and the puck seemed to go in and out all in one motion, but there was no question. The red light went on, a lot of pressure by the Soviets, the defenseman again, moving down into the attack. Going around the net, Bolikov shoving out in front. The first shot, the puck seems to lay there, everybody down trying to block it. Kazatinov moving in, there's the shot, Bolikov just off the edge after Kazatinov had moved right down, and again we see the Soviet defenseman taking the chances, moving in that deep. Getting that puck off the edge, the puck going in and out all in one motion. We'll get the official scoring in a moment. Golikov will get the goal, because Adonov will get the assistance in front of the net. Again, a shot, and it scores! A two-quick goal for the Soviets, and they are ahead in this hockey game. And the Soviets empty the bench. And Canada, in shock right now, they've had two quick ones scored on them. And uh, seen their one-goal lead disappear. Well, this is what the Soviets do. They Once they get you on the run, the shot comes quickly with Golikov in the slot. Once they get you on the run, they keep putting the pressure. Makarov breaking down outside, shoveling that puck right out into the slot. A quick shot from the slot. Back checkers trying to come back, but in and out all in one motion again. So Alexander Golikov is hit twice here. And it's 4-3, to three, and Canada will have to go on the attack once again. Into the corner it goes, Starikov along the boards for the Soviets, Balderas out at center ice. Over the line comes Sportsov, his shot, and it's kicked away by Pancho on the far boards now. Balderas out in front of the net, and the Soviets take a shot that's wide of the net. On the boards on this side, taken by Vasilyev, around the boards on the far side. Grant, Grant, trying to get it ahead for Anderson. Now out in front, there's a quick shot that's over top of the net. The Soviets trying to control things now inside the zone, and Grant gets it away. Anderson, Anderson coming out to center ice now. Anderson with Hill. Anderson to the line. Lines up the shot. Dribbles wide and it came off the leg of Basilia. Now he is deep in the zone. Cleared up by Starikov. He sports off over the line now. Comes Slipdown. He drops it off to sports off and it's poked out to center ice by Greg. Now here's the chance for Canada. Right over the line. The shot. They score. Take 
over now, starting out from his own end is Harlemoff. Battle away Harlemoff to the line now. Harlemoff dropping that puck. Gets the return pass. Puck behind off under 20, trying to roll it through the traffic there, and it was intercepted, and Heimarsh comes away with it. Heimarsh out to center ice. And the Soviets take over once again, backing up is Terakov. Filia left it off. Filia left it off to the line. A shot, and it went off the stick. A pass over into the corner. Seemed to handcuff him momentarily. Now, behind the net, Canada, Maxwell. Maxwell into the corner of the far side. They start away. It's clear to the blue line, not out. The Soviets chasing it down. Petrov against the board. Petrov out in front of the net, and it's taken away, and McLean has it for Canada. Three on two. Here we come. McLean over the line. The drop pass. Good time to win for the loose set. And the win is a loose set. Oh, Canada executed that very well. Just couldn't finish it off. Now on the board. O'Malley. O'Malley outside the blue line. O'Malley's over the line. Offside. Barry was trapped inside. It's called on that offside for a face on. Kenny Barry just moving in late on the first two shots. Paul McLean making a good little move after he jumped the puck to Maxwell. McLean drops to Maxwell. It's put through. McLean trying to get that puck by from the open net. Kenny Barry coming in late, trying to get a stick on the backhand to shovel it by Trechak. But a good stop and a good execution of a three-on-two break by Canada. Face off outside the blue line now. Come on, come on, come on now. Assisted goal by Golikov, then Golikov from Makarov, two goals in 12 seconds, and the Soviets quickly had the lead, but Canada has come back on a goal by Dan Del Beast, unassisted at 3.05. In the corner now, trying to skate away from the checking is Makarov, it's out at center ice, Golikov, Victor Go Vladimir Golikov over the line now, Alexander Golikov trying to get it in front of the net, he slides it in front, and it's golfed down the ice by the Canadians' defense, right on the Soviet goal, and Fred Jack will have to leave it for Starikov. Starikov on the far board, moves it out to center ice, Grant's got it, Grant skating back inside his own zone, Grant ahead, now for Anderson, Anderson over the line, Anderson trying to work around the defense, it's taken away from him by Golikov, and cleared back out to center ice, now ahead, Anderson got it caught up in a skate, it's still tipped over the line, and offside on that play, again a face off outside the Soviet blue line, with five minutes and 57 seconds time of the period, this is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Right off the face-off, the puck is cleared down the ice into Team Canada territory. Randy Gregg lugging it out of his own end. Now ahead, off a skate, down into the Soviet end. Comes out and off, then clears it right back out again. At center ice, Canada, Anderson, clearing it past Kazadinov. Down inside Soviet territory, it's fed off the boards by Fedosov. Out to center ice, here's Big Shlutov over the line. He drops the puck, tries to get set in front of the net. Now they stop it up, Balderas out to Kazadinov, over to the far side. Now the pass left behind, Fedosov golfed in there. It's loose in front of the net, they whack away at it. And Canada clears it to the line. Fedosov, a pile up in front of the net. Fedosov gets a man beat, then shoots it. It goes off a shoulder and up over the glass. That's called for a face-off to the right of the Canada. Well, again, Canada getting a little mixed up in their own zone. Paul Garris had an excellent opportunity around the net. You see him going out. But Greg Curry came all the way from the far corner, as we said earlier in the show. He's a defenseman, and he moves all the way from uh, the left point position, moves all the way to the far side. Here we see the Soviets all around the net. When the puck goes back to the point, here it comes. Brad Curry sells out. They hold on to it. The passage went down. They pulled it by him. But Curry came across in the front of the puck over the glass and out of play. 6.54 gone in the period. 4-4 four, four tie here on the faceoff. Cleared into the area behind the Canadian net. Terry O'Malley has got it. O'Malley, the veteran, behind the net, loses the puck as he's checked off it. And swinging away into the corner is Makarov. Makarov, he goes down on the play. Puck is loose. And coming away with it for Canada is Joe Grant. Out at center ice, coming across ice. And picking it up is Billy Lettinoff. Now at the blue line, high march for Devaney. He's over the line. Devaney getting some help in that corner by Primo. Primo digging in after it. Trying to get it, but finally the Soviets who come away with the puck. Lebedev clearing it up to center ice. O'Malley standing right in there. Takes a check from Krugov, but it's still along the boards. O'Malley. O'Malley moving up. He flips it into the Soviet zone. Billy Lettinoff will chase it down in the corner as Canada makes a complete change. Out there now is Barry, number 19 for Canada. He makes the check against the boards. Cleared back out to center ice again. Billy Lindenoff dropping it back. Perbukin. Perbukin clearing it in. It's into the corner. After it for Canada. Warren Anderson. Anderson. Barry. Out of center ice. The puck is poked away from Kevin Maxwell. And it's Mahailov. Mahailov ahead for Harlemov. But right by him. Down over the line comes Craig. Craig is checked. Puck is loose inside the zone. Harlemov. Number 17 for the Soviets. Out of center ice. Mahailov trying to cut through some traffic. He was unable to. Here comes Canada right back again. Maxwell. Shot there by Maxwell. Now the puck along the far boards, out in center ice. Here comes Harlemoff. He's over the line. Harlemoff stick handling, trying to get around the defense. Doing a great job on him is Warren Anderson. Vasiliev at the blue line. The shot is right on. It's loose in front. The Soviets back away, back away out of it. Still loose. Down behind the net. Out in front. Over there. Here's the shot. Out of the great save. Another shot. They score. 
has lost the stick that's behind the net, he can't play it. And that's a, a tough thing to have. You have to have the face off at this time and yell for the face off. You see him making that great skate save, coming back again, and he has no stick to try and stop that puck. Tries to get his uh, skate and jam that pad in. There's the goal scorer, the captain, the Kyloff, Soviet captain, putting the uh, Soviets ahead 5 to 4. Now over the line, couple of Soviets again, picking it up on the far board. Alexander Golikov, he gets it around behind the net. Spring's got it, spring in the corner, being ripped along the boards. Third out to the blue line, Golikov. Fed his off, he caught it outside the line and brought it in with players trapped inside. So again, we've got an offside call with 11.05 left in the hockey game. Soviets leading Canada 5-4. on goal in this period. Six to three favor the Soviets. There you see the two coaches. Claire Drake on your right. Victor Tikhanov on your left. The official scoring Mihail Mihailov from Sterikov on that last goal at 8.41. Canada needs a tie in this game if they want to stay in the running here. Puck is inside the blue line. Davidson clearing it out to center ice but the Soviets. Bring it right back in again. Trying to get loose. And finally out of center ice. Fedosov has got it for the Soviets. Back at his own blue line, clears it across ice for Kazanov, and Canada turns away with it. Glenn Anderson. Anderson flipping it down over the line, and again, it's Kazanov, who's been a major factor in this hockey game. Back to get it now, and touching it deep in his own zone, and spring, he falls. It's called, and the icing of the faceoff will be back in the Soviet end. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. And from the faceoff, Terry O'Malley's got it in his own zone. He gave it away. Here's the shot. Great save by Pajot as he came out to cut off the angle. The Soviets have it in the corner now. The Soviets try to stick handle, circling around there as Sportsov. Sportsov in against the boards, trying to clear the front. He does shoot off shot. And that one ripped it over the top of the net. Now in against the boards. Fury, Fury kicking it along behind the net for O'Malley. O'Malley being checked in the corner. Manages to fight his way through, puts it along the boards. Zervancic out of center ice. And turning with it, coming right back in again. Paul Darris on this side, and it's offside, and the ball can face on outside the blue line with 9.51 remaining. And there's Terry O'Malley. This is his third Olympic team. He played in two of them, 64 and 68. And, of course, Canada has not had an Olympic year since then. They missed the 72 and 76 Olympics. And now are back and putting on a gallant fight here against the Soviet Union. Now from the face off. Moving up at center ice, Greg, Greg unable to get loose, Makarov's back over the line, Makarov tries to make a fake, still keeps it inside the blue line, skating very well as he shoots it into the corner, digging in there is Krugoff, Krugoff behind the net, and Canada takes over once again as Heinmarsh, flips it off the glass, it deflects out to the blue line, Vasiliev shooting it in, and Pajo just got down to save that one, he had bounced in front of him, but I don't think he saw it until the last instant, and we'll have a face off in Team Canada territory, there's Paul Pajo. Victor Tikhanov, uh, not as excited as right. Here's the shot coming through. It goes through a lot of traffic. No one seems to see it. It changes a little direction. Paul Peugeot trying to get it with his glove. The puck stuck underneath his pads. Doesn't really know where it is, but holds it before it goes over the line. On the faceoff, Warren Anderson in the corner, number two for Canada. Along the boards, trying to work it out. And it comes to Vasiliev. He's stick out it along the line, and then a shot is blocked by Randy Drake, and he lugs it out to center ice. Drake feeding it along now, and that's intercepted. Here comes Maxwell, right back again. Players go down center right back left shot it's right on the rebound is loose in front and the defense covered up very deeply on that play trying to carry it away there is the Fanny. it's out in front and canada trying to work it out the center race and finally it's primo who shoots it out there canada changing on the play the puck is over the line it's put off put off goes down bodies are flying all over the place the city of it center ice trying to clear it to the line players trapped inside the blue line so no move by the soviets to go on the attack now anderson goes in against the board players piling in there and it'll be called again for a face-off at center ice with 8 40 left in the hockey game well i'll tell you one thing team canada gets you see a tired bench kevin primo going off and kevin primo just gets everything he has all the time matt rock controlling that puck here we have the shot paul Pajot making the stop up on his blocker and then Team Canada coming back to clear their rebound. The young Makarov always dangerous. Face off now, skating along his blue line as Waters. He beats it down into the Soviet end. And Fredjak will leave it there for the defense to Sunanov. Over to the far side, Arlamov. Arlamov, that center right, did a good job. Stick handling around. Maxwell is over the line, trying to fight his way through and unable to. Spring takes over. Playing the man on that completely with Waters. Number five for Canada. Banged off the boards. Here's a race 
into the corner. Barry, along with Petrov. Barry going in hard against the boards. He goes down, covering up on the play, and spit is off. Spit is off, rink wide, and center ice Mahailov. Mahailov to the line. They crisscross. Mahailov, Palomov cutting in front of the net. Mahailov behind the net, still has that puck, gets it out the blue line. Fedosov shot is kicked into the ground by goaltender Paul Bajo, and we'll have another face off. One thing that's really important in this hockey game late was 7.59 remaining in the hockey game is conditioning. And Team Canada just breaking in. Kenny Berry hustling there. Would have been an icing call. Gets first to the puck. That, again, is an example of Team Canada's hustle here. There's Ken Berry on the bench. A little bit of cut there under his uh, under his mouth. But T Kenny Berry, a very fast skater. Team Canada skating with the Soviets step for step here in the late stages of the third period. Face off to the right of the Team Canada goal. On the faceoff, Canada does not win it. There's a shot. It's blocked by the defense. Canada's trying to fight its way out now, unable to. Now it's cleared up to the blue line. The shot comes in. Goes to the side of the net. Digging in after it there is Makarov. The whistle goes, and it'll be called for a faceoff. Don't forget, tonight, along with, of course, the highlights of this exciting game and the Czechoslovakia-Sweden game earlier today, you'll see highlights of speed skating, cross-country, women's giant slalom, the first run this morning. All of this tonight following the national news on CTV, your Olympic network. For the faceoff, cleared in. O'Malley goes deep into his corner after it. O'Malley behind the net, trying to drop it off. Fumbled it a bit, now he's got it again. O'Malley into the corner, band on it again. Now fighting off a check. That's Golikov, Alexander Golikov. Now cleared by Anderson. Off the boards, can't get it out as he rolls back to the side of the net. And O'Malley, leading it into the corner, nil. And it's pinned against the board by Golikov. It's Vladimir Golikov. And it is to be called for face-off to the left of the Canada goal. The Golikov brothers, rookies to Olympic play. I think they made their mark last year during the Challenge Cup Series against the National Hockey League. They're from Penza in the Soviet Union, in the Moscow area. by their father. As a matter of fact, before coming, of course, to the World Junior Championships and to the national team. From the faceoff, cleared up off the boards now. Went right past the, the defenseman at the point. That's Starikov racing it after for Canada's Dalvis. But Starikov recovers. East to Vasilia. Vasilia can't get it out of his own. Randy breaks in deep. Does the shot. It's loose a puck. They shoot. First puck bouncing around. Still loose. Canada reaching, reaching, but they can't seem to control it. Peary getting in and slamming it in against the board. Peary now behind the net. Zupancic back to Peary. Peary in the corner. Vasilia playing all over him. Buck is in the corner. Now Shlutov goes after it. Schwartz off in against the board. Peary digging away at it. Holds down. Beast. It's called for a faceoff to the right in the Soviet goal. What a glorious opportunity Brad Peary had. He has a goal for Team Canada, but that puck was just bouncing. Couldn't quite find a handle. You see the original shot coming. Team Canada doing a good job of board checking. Delvis off the edge. They control it off the edge of the net. Here's Brad Peary. The puck was bouncing, bouncing, trying to get a stick on it. Goes a little by the net. Delvis reaching back for it, trying to get it. But you see Trechak out of the net. Oh, what a difference that few feet makes. 6.45, as you see on the clock. Puck is against the boards. Devaney is in there. So is Hindmarch. They poke away at it. Devaney out in front of the net now. And he tried to get a shot away, but it was taken away and bringing it in. Sergei Makarov in center right. Makarov down the right boards now. Clearing it rink wide. On the far side, Benesov takes a shot. It's deflected into the board area behind the net. And Canada comes away with it now. Starting out at center ice. Taken by Waters. Waters to Spring. To Primo. Primo over the line now. High march. High march. Trying to sweep around the defense and pull it in front, and it went by everybody. And the Soviets turn, and Makarov coming out of his own zone on the right boards for Lebedev. Lebedev, down over the line, and it's intercepted by Spring. Lebedev goes down, and Canada will come away with it again. Don Spring, ahead for Primo, it's at least for Devaney, at center ice. Uh, Mihailov shooting it back in, and Canada will come right back out with it. Waters, Waters for McLean. McLean hooked it away from a player, but the Soviets get it again as Lebedev goes to the far boards. He's checked. Now McLean moves in. Canada changing on the fly. And a two-line pass, I believe. It'll be whistled down for a face-off in the center ice area. Look at the Team Canada bench. Jim Nill you saw there. Well, entire Team Canada. Uh, they have worked very, very hard on conditioning. Will be the story. Shots the 
this period, by the way, 14 to 4 is in favor of the Soviets so far. So it's a reversal of form from the second period. Randy Gregg, the captain. A few words there for the referee, Jim Nagels, of the United States. Jim Nagels. Gregg over at the bench, trying to get things organized. You know, the face-off will be in the center ice area. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. Well, Canada got caught with too many men on the ice on that last play over near the Canada bench. It happens so often when the puck comes into a crowd as players are trying to get on and off the ice. And so Canada is now shorthanded Mihailov inside his own zone. Mihailov out to center ice for the Soviet Union, clearing it rink wide. On this side after it, a golf pick it off the glass and out to center ice was Joe Grant, number seven for Canada. Back forward is Perabukin. Perabukin at center ice for Billy Lettenoff. Billy Lettenoff threw the puck away to Greg. Greg against the boards. He's partially fanned on it. It was checked by Mihailov. And it was Greg who got it down into the Soviet zone. Perabukin again. Perabukin, he's number five. Plays with Moscow Dynamo. At center ice, Perabukin over the line. Shoots it in. Behind the net, left there by Pajot, tossed around the boards by Joe Grant, and up to center ice once again with 57 seconds remaining in the penalty. Now Harlemov, oh, look at that collision as Buddy Anderson just laid out Harlemov. And Harlemov is heading off the ice, and I think he's hurt on that one. Here over the line comes Ken Berry, but he was stopped on the play. Players go down, Mihailov, Mihailov still out there now. Over the line comes Golikov. In against the boards on the far side, Alexander Golikov up to the blue line, still kept in. Alexander Golikov again. Makarov comes off the bench. Golikov circling into the corner. Still with that puck. Golikov flipping it to Makarov. Makarov against the boards. Up to the blue line. Billy left it off to Makarov. Makarov. Makarov working it into up in front. That's planning on a good chance there in front of the net was Golikov. Now to the far blue line. Perabukin keeping it in again. Better working in front. Here's a chance. The shot is blocked by Brad. Into the corner it goes. Golikov. Golikov. To his brother. Up to the blue line now. Skating along the line is Perabukin. He shoots it into the corner. Makarov taking a shot that deflects off the stick. And the penalty has expired. A far board shot. Canada with McLean coming to center ice. Now it's center ice working it along the boards. To the line. Devaney. Devaney unable to control it. Canada changing again on the fly. inside his own blue line. Golikov working up the left side now. Trying to work around the defense. Waters on in there. He pushes it on the board. Throws it in front of the They score. It went off a leg and inadvertently goes into the net. So with 3.09 remaining, the Soviets have moved into a 6-4 to four lead. And I don't know whose leg that went off, but Golikov came around behind the net. Here it is. Perhaps we can see it there. Well, Golikov is moving around the net, uh, uh, put the puck into the net. Canada has requested a stick measure at this point, but they're not going to give it to them. I don't understand this. He's trying to change the stick. We're seeing the goal. Golikov coming around the net. But Canada wants a stick measure. On Golikov, and the referee won't give it to him. The referee won't give him the measure, and Golikov has gone to the bench and is trying to change his stick. <laughs> There's Golikov on the bench. And now Randy Gregg is arguing, and they are handing sticks back and forth over there. Golikov unassisted. At 16.51, 6 to 4, the Soviets are leading. I don't believe this. The referee won't get the measure. The Soviet player Golikov went right down the bench. The trainer took the stick from him, changed it for a stick on the edge. Golikov has played. Golikov has played with an illegal stick. We saw it before the game. We said if we were down a goal late in the game, we were going to question Golikov's stick. He scores the goal. We question the stick. The man, the man is changing the stick right now on the bench, and they won't give us a stick measure. Alexander Golikov has a hat trick in this period. He's been the man. From the face off now. Down inside the zone. Canada should have to open up the stops here now. As over on the far side. Taken by Waters. Waters in center ice. Leads it over the line. Maxwell. Maxwell trying to work in front of the net. It bounces up to center ice once again. And sports off. Down over the line. He comes. Sports off. Trying to get in front of the net. Rolls it in front of the shot. And Pajot seems to get a chance to block that one on uh, Paul Darren. Now in the corner. After it, in the corner. Soviets can't control it. Canada coming away with 
shorts on and dropped off the ball there. Canada beats him to the back of McLean. And center ice, McLean, over the line, along with Maxwell. McLean dropped up through it into the slot. And Manning on up is Ken Perry there. And the bucket back out at center ice. Down to the line for the Soviets now. A long shot by Schwartzoff playing without a helmet. And the Canadians come away with it once again. Here's Perry at center ice now. But his inside the team Canada net. As a matter of fact, Perry goes into the corner. Cut in front. And it went right by. Shot wide of the net, it goes out to the blue line now. Bear Vulcan keeping it in behind the net. Mihailov, Mihailov out in front. Harlemov rolled it through the goal crease area. But takes it over on the far side for Canada. It's Waters. Here comes the goaltender now. We're going to pull on that. The goaltender is out as the puck bounces into the corner. After it in there now, as it's cleared in. Delvis in there. Canada trying to control it. Behind the net now for Canada. Delvis trying to get it out in front. It's behind the net. Rolls out in front. There's a shot. Just missed the net. It's loose in front. Now against the boards. After it is Maxwell. Canada will storm the net now with 40 seconds left. Behind the net. After that puck is Mihailov. It's cleared along the boards. Maxwell keeping it in. Maxwell against the boards. They poke away at it. In there is Petrov as well. Zubancic now behind the net. Taken by... Dalvis, Dalvis, out in front of the shot, it's blocked, it's loose in front, and down goes Preshock, it's still loose, behind the net, players ball, cutting through the traffic is water, 17 seconds left, they pin it in against the boards, and it's held for a face-off with 14 seconds left in the period. Well, one thing in the hockey game, Team Canada down 6-4, the goaltender out because the tie is needed at the, uh, unless uh, uh, Holland could take one point from Finland in the last game today, Team Canada has a team that I think all Canadians have to be proud of because right here with the score of 6-4, no one's given up, everybody's storming the net, they're giving it everything they've got to try and get in this middle round. Just a great effort by Team Canada here, they had the lead, 3-1. Then they lost it very quickly in the third period, then regained the tie. But then the Soviets have come back on goals by Mihailov and Alexander Golikov, his third of the game. And that's the two goal balls right now. With 14 seconds left, everyone playing up over the blue line. It's from the faceoff. Canada wins. Fanning on it there. The puck is loose. The Soviets try to get out. Here's a long clearing pass. Steered down wide of the net off the stick of Makarov. Cleared wide. Icing will be the call with four seconds left. And the faceoff will be down just inside the blue line of the Soviets. Not an icing call. An offside. A two-line pass comes back to where the pass was shot from. Just inside the Soviet blue line. seconds left. They'll play every man up over that line again as Claire Drake watches and Canada is getting a standing ovation. This is great. Canada is getting a standing ovation for their effort against the Soviet Union. Don't forget, this is much the same team that shut out the National Hockey League All-Stars last year. The hockey game is over and Canada is getting the standing ovation. Well, as we just finished saying, there's a standing ovation. Everybody here, the fans just giving them, there's a, a Soviet fans, but it was a great hockey game. Canada gave it everything they had. Just couldn't quite stay with them in the late stages of the hockey game, but nevertheless, an effort that all Canadians can be proud of. There's the handshake. 
They played a pretty tough one, Team Canada did. A tough one to lose, lose rather. But it was a gallant effort, and I don't think anybody could have predicted that Canada would put in the effort that they did here this afternoon. Just tremendous, just another one of a series of great confrontations between a Canadian hockey team and a team from the Soviet Union. The shots on goal final, Soviet 35, Canada 26, final score, six to four Soviets. Tom, uh, I just, I went, just went down and I asked Nagels, why did you refuse the measurement? He said by the time I could catch him, he was already off the ice and on the bench, and that's why I couldn't give him the measurement. Well, there's Johnny Esau, doing a little homework for us. Six to four, the Soviets, Canada gets the standing ovation. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. A gallant effort by Team Canada, and I'm sure all Canadians coast to coast are very proud of our Canadian Olympic team. They certainly gave it all they had against a very tough and physical Soviet team. The winning goal was scored by Mikhailov in the third period. From Starikov at 8.41, as Paul Pajot had lost his goal stick, and the puck comes to the side, just bounces off Pajot's right pad into the net, and that gave the Soviets a 5-4 lead. Canada did lead 3-2 going into that period, but the Soviets with two quick goals 12 seconds apart, with Alexander Golikov getting his first two of the three-goal hat trick. So the Soviets win it 6-4 over Team Canada. This is CTV, Canada's Olympic Network. <laughs>